fear. What's the move now here? How do you reacquire safety? Hello. Hey, did you hear all that? I heard enough to know she saved your ass. <laughs> yeah. What happens next? We'll see. Damn. Hey, he had your back, mate. He was ready, I think, to pull that trigger if you needed to. It was, um... Don't lie. It's the guy who saved my life. Nice. And I was ambushed, but then that guy on the phone, he showed up. Jimmy, Jimmy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And it's fine that it took him a second to actually tell her. It's a lot to have to recount. What's important, mate? Work it out. Into the money, the power, these things you built up, or uh, your love. Uh, even now, I want him to find his way back from this. How are your shoulders? I'm, uh... Am I bad for you? <sighs> are you bad for me? I got you into this. What happened tonight? Chuck coming back, whispering in his ear, I think. None of this would have happened if you weren't with me. Sure, but she also decided for herself she wanted to be with you. That love is real. And that is good. There's clearly joy and happiness and she thinks it's worth it. That matters. You crossed a line. You're not going to do it again. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. He's actually maybe starting to examine things. This introspection. Good night. Hello and welcome to A Better Call Saul Sunday. That's right, the show that happens on a Sunday. Today is the finale. Something unforgivable. So we shall see who does what. Flamingo check. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oof. Can you communicate with Varga? He's earned some consideration. Mm, he's constantly trying to impose his own code onto this world, and that's not really how it works. Mike's code's very individual to him, right? Gus doesn't so much necessarily have a code as he has a goal. You know, within that, he has something of a code, sure. But I think that's the point, is that both of their ideologies, Gus, Mike, clash right now. Nacho to Mike, I mean, Mike is... An empathetic person anyway, but there's that personal connection. Whereas Gus doesn't have that. Does Varga know there's going to be an assassination? No one's told him, but he can make a pretty damn good guess. Huh. Perhaps. Assassination. Yeah, and Gus is never gonna give any ground when he's looking at the burned remnants of his restaurant. That reminder. I should learn a chisel. What a cool little skill, eh? That could make a flamingo. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, okay, in the belly of the beast, eh? <laughs> Very much Lalo's people, eh? Yeah. This ain't getting out, mate. I mean, that's risky. These are my people. Yolanda, she is the best cook in all of Chihuahua. You're gonna eat like you have Chihuahua. before in your life. Oh, really? Oh, okay, get me involved in that, mate. Tomatoes is Tomatoes, jefe. His tomatoes are the best ever, eh? Do you know what? I like these guys. El, Gerardo, Raul. Look, we got tomato, mate. I just keep them around because they're so pretty, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is all about trust, isn't it? That line from Kim. Listen, welcome. Smile. You're in my house, man. Come on. Yeah. My guess it would be a promotion. I think he's seeking a comrade. Someone he can trust, right? That needs to change. He's chosen Nacho. It makes sense. You going to court? Yeah, I have a hearing at 10. Hey, I think I might have a better idea. What if we spend the whole day here? Heated pool, a swim up bar. You take advantage of that, mate. Oh, and get couples massages. With your sunburn? 
He needs like, it's almost like um, to pamper himself, to relax, to have a good time. He needs validation almost. He needs someone there along with him. He doesn't know how to do that on his own. He can't, he can't do it on his own. He's not learned that. Kim is almost, he's swimming in the ocean and Kim is rubber armbands helping keep him afloat. He doesn't know how to swim himself. What I mean is he doesn't know how to take care of himself mentally. He doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't know how to process these emotions he doesn't even know how to identify them i don't think he even knows what some of it is and where the root cause of it lies but if he can carve out any kind of slice of that of self-care he needs her there to be able to do it he can't do it on his own because he never learned we'll just go hang in the because you can do all this on your own mate that's scary end it all with a midnight cheeseburger do that that does sound great you deserve that you don't think it's safe or that. What's the harm in being a little cautious? What about tomorrow? And the next day? We just need to keep our eyes open and get on with our lives. Mm. Kim. Police headquarters is right next door. I mean, I want to say they're safe for now. He's not thinking about them. It's going to be fine. Mm. He's going to try and fix this. That's what worries me. Hey, it's me. I want an update. Because I think, I honestly think they're fine for now. I think what she said, what Kim said really got Lalo thinking, which I think is why he's acting the way he is, took Nacho with him. This is what I mean. He's not thinking about them right now. I'm not saying that they're safe completely by any means, but I think they're safe right now. That being said, obviously they don't know that. Jimmy doesn't know that. And I think, yeah, like I say, something bad might come from this because he might want to act preemptively and then make things worse. <laughs> Jimmy can't sit still. That's not really what he does. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Who that? Sorry, Mira, you know what? I have to go. I'd like some more PD overflow. You want the clients that'll get you, you know, in here. <sighs> I'll take 20. 20? Hold this. <laughs> that feels like a lot. Oh, gotta warn you. Right now, we backed up like an outhouse at Woodstock. Here we go. The file room. All of these cases are pending. <sighs> I had more burnouts than usual this last quarter. That's what I call taking that private firm gig, getting that sweet company car. All of this work that he's doing, all backed up, it really uh, strikes a bleak picture, doesn't it? Burning rubber on your way out. Not enough people just want to help people. Trespassing. She's such a great character for that. You know, she is the foil to Jimmy's money, power, flashy cars, big mansions. She just wants to help people. I'll get you a box. Bless her. When you talk to the boss, you call him Don. You tell the truth. Fewest words <laughs> you can. If he likes you, he's going to give you a bump up. Hello. I see you. I do. And if he doesn't like me? Mm. Make sure that doesn't happen, mate. Ah, you'll be fine. <laughs> Oh god. Hay un portón en la parte de atrás del lugar de Salamanca. A las 3 de la mañana esta noche. Quítale el candado. Ábrelo. Lárgate de ahí. Huh? I think this is a test. I think this is Lalo. Ser esto limpio, ¿verdad? Tiene por lo menos 7 hombres aquí, pero también hay varios ancianos que nunca le han hecho nada. You know, it's about trust. He needs to know that he has Nacho's trust. It's gonna be document heavy. Hello, mate. Oh. Uh, what for? Good to see you, man. This is Kim Wexler. She's an HHM alum and now heads up banking at Schweikart and Coakley. Uh, are you going to tell him? I'm actually not at Schweikart anymore. Yeah. Really? As of yesterday. He's been doing a lot Thank of work. You. I actually think he's got the maturity now to, to acknowledge, yeah. Kim! Some of what he did with her, a bit more. It wasn't up to him, I left. Well, what about Mesa Verde? Can I ask why? That is personal. <sighs> Spare yeah, me so. a minute. He cares. Please. It's important. I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, mentioning Jimmy. To get something off my chest, it didn't go very well. Mm. I just think... I was going to apologize, maybe. Before you make any big changes in your life, there's something about Jimmy you ought to hear. Go on. A little while ago, I offered Jimmy a job at HHM. I'm guessing he didn't mention it to you. You are very tanned. But then the very next night, he threw bowling balls over my front gate. A couple of weeks later, I'm having lunch with Cliff Maine. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. It's kind of funny. And after some hemming and hawing, he all but confessed. She's shaking again. Attention's back. Almost maybe fear. Have I made the right choice to throw all my eggs in one basket? That basket specifically, maybe. That's f Look at that. Sorry, because I just caught the beginning of the line that she's had coming out of this. And that's it? And that's it. She's going to brush it off. <laughs> Sorry. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I caught there, but that's it as I was coming out of that, as I started talking. But uh, so she's playing it off. I think she's feeling it a little bit, though. Bit of fear, bit of worry, especially considering all the cartel stuff. There's got to be some element of her mind, as much as she's been lovely and empathetic and caring maybe a part of her that's going have i made the right choice because at the end of the day as much as jimmy's right to a, a large extent about they're in this situation because of him she was the one who suggested marriage she had it on the table she put it there herself of we should stop this we need to split up or marriage she did that that was her choice i confronted jimmy about it i wonder if she's going to uh, paint it as like you're paranoid you're the paranoid one you think it was jimmy nah maybe <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Howard. Mm. You really you, you you really had me going there. But no person in their right mind would behave the way Jimmy has. We are talking about someone who's not in control of himself. He's trying to warn her. But she knows all this. You and I both know. It makes no sense to drop a client like Mesa Verde. And I gotta think Jimmy had something to do with that. No, that was hers. Do you have any idea how insulting that is? Yeah, fair. I make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. For my own reasons. You gotta listen to me. The man needs help. It's funny, isn't it? Howard's right, but he's wrong. He's let Jimmy and, and all of that get in his head a little bit. And he's right about Jimmy. He is. He needs help. He does. He's right. But he's conflated that with Kim. And, and I think he's got Kim's best interests at heart. I, I do. But he is wrong. And, and he's wrong to kind of put her decision on, on Jimmy. I know Jimmy. And you're wrong. Mm. I think she's in too deep though as well, right? She can't see that it's not okay, that, it, that it's not good. You know who really knew Jimmy? Chuck. Chuck. And he's dead. <sighs> I mean, look, I think, I don't think Howard was doing that to shade Jimmy either. I think he was doing that to kind of get through to Kim a little bit and be like, he, like he, I mean, his words, his own words, Howard's words. He needs help, the man needs help. And he's not wrong, he's not. Open this door! I feel like this show is such a good case study for always being aware that a situation might not necessarily be as it appears. You know, we're aware of all this stuff in the show. We're very privileged in that way. We have all of the information. We've seen all of the past that brought us here. We've seen all of the ways in which, because I mean, at the same time, as Howard saying all that he is about Jimmy and being right, he's unaware of why Jimmy lashed out and reacted the way he did based on what Howard said. I, I, I think that conversation they initially had when he offered Jimmy the job, in Howard's language, it was kind of apparent that I don't think he really realized how deeply that kind of thing would cut Jimmy. He wasn't aware of that. We obviously, are, you know, I mean, go back to kind of like my analysis of that scene. You know, if you've watched the show, you're aware of all those nuances, those complexities. And so it's kind of, you know, as you're going through the show, there is this sense of, I know exactly why you said that. I know exactly why you said that. I know why you're conflicting. You're not wrong. You, you're also wrong in a certain respect, but I understand why you don't realize that. And I realize, you know what I mean? And you know, Howard coming across to Kim and he kind of came across quite presumptuous, quite quite up himself, you know, probably came across in a similar fashion, perhaps to the way that Kim, you know, had, had previously, has previously perceived him as well. All of these different things that I think when you're in the moment, when you're kind of navigating these situations, you're not really aware of, because obviously why would you be? But like I say, I think this show is such a case study that regardless of any situation you might be in, regardless of how someone might be acting, the decisions they're making that don't make sense to you, how unreasonable they might seem, whatever it might be, and maybe they are unreasonable as well. I think there's something to be said, kind of a lesson from this show for holding your heart and, and practicing this idea of understanding, trying to understand. We're all individual humans with, you know, different experiences that bring us to the lives we end up holding, you know, to the next person that's wrong, the way they're doing it. All of these things in the show are so understandable because we have all the context and life is the exact same, but we just don't have that context for all and every individual action or decision someone makes, but to that person, it makes complete sense. And I just, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, I just think it's something to remember, right? Because I think that kind of thinking does make you more understanding a little bit more patient if you practice it right speaking for myself i mean i think it's valuable well the joke's on you sucker i'm your attorney mike i'm not going anywhere <laughs> hey keep it down i, I will not keep it down. dude okay 
They could have eyes on you, mate, and they might have followed you straight to him and they might recognize him with Gus. So dangerous. It's not my fault that I got ambushed. Why did I have to lie to Salamanca about that? It's true, yeah. Tell me what is happening now. Yeah, that's true. That's not your concern. No, 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 that is true. That's fair, I think, Mike. You asked him to lie, and from whose perspective, why? His, there's a lot on the line now. His life, Kim's life, right? Lalo's comment, I didn't even consider. But I think if I were in Jimmy's position, I would want an answer. Why are you asking me to do that? I'm risking everything now. And I could have just told the truth. I got attacked. I got ambushed. You are not blowing me off with any, that's not the end of the story. Specifics! You're asking for information you can't have. You messed up, Mike. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have given him a tease. If anything happens to her... This man has other things on his mind. He's not thinking about you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Lalo Salamanca is going to die. Use the assassination, eh? Okay, no, so the phone call went out, That was legit. This time tomorrow, it'll be done. Now keep stum. Okay. I mean, he's getting out of it, right? There's no way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> of course, they all love him. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> El hombre. <laughs> Showmanship. He's a fickle boss, isn't he? He's amigo de Tuco. <laughs> de Tuco, de verdad. Entonces estás bien aquí. <laughs> Come on, Nacho, you got this. Tico, vamos a platicar tú y yo, eh? Yeah. Why not? Bang out a drink, mate. That's guy. Come on, I don't know. I need my little boy to succeed. <laughs> ¿Cómo es que tú me vas a generar plata? I quite like that he, uh, he takes him aside and has a drink with him and has a chat. I get it. He's not boss for no reason. ¿Qué es lo que quieres tú? Lo que quiero. <sighs> what do I want? Maybe he turns on Gus. Respeto. Quiero tomar mis propias decisiones. Seguir mi propio camino. Mm. Que nadie ni por un momento piense en jugármela y... Yeah, he's a pawn. Yo no quiero tener que... I think we're getting actual honesty from him now. This is what he wants, maybe. Because he is his a pawn. Maybe there's an opportunity here, actually. Make guys bien. Salud. All right, man, well done. I feel like passed. You need to stop thinking, mate. You need to just chill out. Okay, get a cheeseburger. Go to the pool. Not in that order. The other way around, maybe. Really? <laughs> really? I was in Mexico and he's staying there. And you believe him? Yeah. Great. We're safe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna confront him about Howard? I wonder. So what's wrong? It's, it's over. Mm -hmm. This time. Are you gonna split up with her? That introspection on the bed. I wonder. Is he gonna... Kim. It's been a rough ride. We should probably just check out and go home. We already paid for the night. Have a good time. Yeah. We haven't even tried room service. Buddy, let's go. Smashing. Don't you just want to go home? A veil of white cheddar draped over coarse ground Angus beef patty, locally grown chili pepper. You want to get like three of those, mate, trust me. I'm hungry, Jimmy. Come on, mate, cheer up. I mean, this is the thing, because, sorry, I was saying maybe he might feel like he has to split up with her to keep her safe. I don't think that's going to help. You know, they could split up, whatever. Lalo's still going to use her if he needs to put pressure on Jimmy, I think, at this point. Damage is done. Stay together. Have a good time. Do what you got to do, you know. I don't know that he's necessarily going to see it that way. Because uh, if they stay together, he's going to feel a level of culpability that he might be able to get rid of if he splits up with her. In his own head, maybe. So I ran into Howard. Bowling balls? <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, that all happened before we... Before we got married? The truth thing. You know why Hamlin told me all that? Go ahead. It was for my own good. <laughs> like, like I'm... No. ...waiting for him to 
This is exactly what's been playing around in his head. You think it's silly, Kim. Um, I think Howard had a point, And like I say, that's been ruminating in Jimmy's head. I think that's where that introspection has been coming from. He had that question previously. What was it? Do you think I'm bad for you? It's been on his mind. Validly so. I think, you know, like as much as I was saying, sure, Kim's made her decisions that have kept her here when she could have got out. But at the same time, the decisions Jimmy has made has impacted both of them. Like he has put her in danger. And as much as she's bringing this up as like, a, how silly is that? Another person seriously coming in and being like, you're not good for her. Might be the nail in the coffin in his mind. Solidifies it. It's, it's, it's all about him. It's always all about him. Yeah, that past of hers coming in and um, unfortunately influencing the way that she perceived all that. Whereas obviously, like I say, we as the audience know better, I think. Because when was the last time she really had an interaction with Howard? I think their relationship largely hasn't really progressed. She hasn't really seen the changes that we have. And I think truthfully, in that conversation, I think there was actually a little bit of ego in Howard and how he presented it to her. You know, as mature as he's been, He's still human, he's gonna feel that stuff too. The guy's in love with himself. Walter? He needed to be taken down a peg. So... <laughs> you're on board with it. What's next? I think maybe the next thing is... Really? You're getting involved? His hair. <laughs> right? And then while he's out... Jeez. Get out the old electric clippers. Buddy. I mean, respectfully, I don't think you'd ever have uh, suggested that yeah. if you'd not got to a place what? the place that you are with jimmy it's an old gag but um i'm not saying that this side of kim never existed but jimmy sure brought it out didn't he put nair in his shampoo bottle we're actually doing this okay <laughs> yes and the eyebrows <laughs> or or oh well at least he's cheering up Maybe okay break into his house replace all the fluffy toilet paper we're still on it, really. We get off over that, fair enough, hey. <laughs> or whatever tanning lotion he uses, we replace it with sunblock. We all have our turn-ons, don't we? For what? Oh no, the blanket over the head, someone's dying. Who is it? Well. What if Howard does something terrible? My God, we're still on this. No, I mean really bad. I don't like your serious tone, mate. You know, misappropriating funds or... Um... She's being... Bribing witnesses, something like that. Surprisingly. That it mean for the sandpiper case? Sandpiper coming back in. We could tank the whole thing. She's been surprisingly aggressive, cruel. If it fell apart now, they'd get nothing. So yeah. Jeez. I already tried like hell to get sandpiper settled. Yeah, but you went about it wrong. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but this is how you do it. It's crazy that that's coming back round into it, eh? And the lawyers get paid. How much of the common fund do you get? We get 20%. Oh, God damn, they're doing it, aren't they? I'm just, I'm... Spitballing you? No, you're not. Forget it. Okay. Let me forget it. You just ruminated on You just had that discussion for, like, how long? Admittedly, I don't know how long he lasted. It might have been a, a couple minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Jimmy. I'm sure you, I'm sure you did great, mate. You can't just drop a forget about it after that, mate. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mm hmm Okay. Just leave him alone. He was genuinely trying to help. <laughs> you don't sleep? Yeah, I never sleep much. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker. I know what's going on here. I know, I know all of the stuff involved and I'm still like, oh, I love it. I want to be friends, you know? I'm a sucker. <laughs> An hour, maybe two. It's enough. Really? That's crazy. When it's like this, that's when I can think. Yeah, everything's quiet. I get ya. <laughs> that's the door, huh? Yeah. I'd rather get some shut eye. And yet here we are. He gets one or two hours there. What are the chances of him leaving? Got anything stronger? Yeah. Now you're talking. Bottom shelf. Two glasses. <laughs> oh, I wanted to be mates, man. Sorry. It's a, it's a different. It's a different world I want in it, really. Are you gonna drag him? Really? Okay. No. <laughs> oh, it's gonna go horribly wrong, isn't it? Oh, we never got to see any of that lady's cooking. That sucks, does that? I thought you got lost. 
Say something, Nacho. Stop being so sus. There we go. Mate. All you need now is a jaunt through the desert. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I love that he... <laughs> Sorry, just a little detail. I love that he got the, t the bottle top the wrong way around. Look at that. <laughs> to sleep. And those who need it. So what, yeah, he's starting a fire. And then he's going to run off. And then you're going to dart out, maybe? What the hell is that? These morons have no respect. Oh, he thinks they're smoking. Now, if you're going to do it, man. Oh god, why am I? I'm so nervous. I feel like it's gonna get caught. Here we go. I didn't turn my cuisine. <sighs> they were on the other side of that all that time. Yeah, mate. You gotta go, Lone Ranger, and get out of there. <laughs> He's getting out of this. There's no way he's dying. And he's going to know. Ask them compliments in the door. Oh, God. Yeah. <sighs> that kid's got a gun. Yeah. He gets that gun, it's game over. I get that these guys are uh, trained assassins, but Lalo's another breed, isn't he, really? Oh, God. Straight in the face, yeah? Straight in the face, get a gun. Yeah. Hot oil to the eyes, man. God damn. Oh, that sucks. I hope he finishes carving, I do. Wow, really? <laughs> of course. Little hidey hole. They're all gone. That's a very much uh, save myself kind of thing, isn't it? But hey, at the end of the day, we'll come out of it alive. Is he gonna run into Nacho, do you think? Nah. He's bait is he baiting them? Because he left it open on purpose. Yeah, he could have closed that and then had never found it. Or not in time. This is vindictive, he wants to kill him. I wouldn't want to be you, mate. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what a cut. What do you want? Yeah, that smiling face. I'll have a little of everything. What do you want? A little of everything. It's kind of beautiful cutting straight after the scene with Lalo. That's always been part of Jimmy's problem. He does want a little of everything. And the danger inherent in Lalo taking down all those men gives an insight into the future that might await his life. The man that is the danger. The man that they're on the radar of. And finally this sense of peace is settled. They're okay, they're fine. And then we get a glimpse of the danger. Cut to Jimmy's smiling face. There's something beautiful about that. <laughs> Actually, leave off the midship. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, bless him. It's not super healthy. It's not super... It's a little bit damaged, isn't it? But it's uh, kind of beautiful. What would you? And open a pro bono practice. That sounds nice, mate. Give regular people the kind of representation usually only millionaires get. Yeah, hey. I was going to say we buy a house. <laughs> we could do both. Why not? Sandpiper was willing to go to 26 million, and 20% of that is. Around 2 mil. Wow. Damn. Okay, well, there's the incentive. I mean, I think it started very much as a, as a get back at Howard scheme, but I think it's yeah, maybe na the nail in the coffin that's going to make them do it is that money and the promise of what they could have. I bet it's not happening. Are you sure? Come on, Kim. You don't want any more danger, risk. We're talking about scorched earth. Really? We would have to hurt him. Hurt him bad. Howard would have to have done something 
We're really thinking about it. Unforgivable. No. At the end of it, he might never be able to practice law again. Oh, come on. He doesn't deserve that. Thank you. And who knows if we could pull it off. Kim, stop. Okay, maybe we could pull it off, but we won't. We're talking about a career setback for one lawyer. <laughs> you can help a lot of people. I, I get it, but... <laughs> Mm. Interesting how it's reversed. It's Jimmy trying to pull her back. It's her embodying the slipping Jimmy and him actually being like, well, we're not actually going to do that. Uh, bring the morals into it too. He doesn't deserve that. It's really interesting. It's not you. You would not be okay with it. There it is again, that. Wouldn't I? Oh. The lighting on their faces is beautiful, by the way. Kim. You're me, right? Uh, I mean... You're turned on, aren't you? This is the Kim you always wanted, almost. Partner in crime. This is a very slippery, slippery slope, innit? God, they're gonna do it. I mean, season six, that's a big plot to explore. Final season, makes sense, eh? These guys all got taken out, it's crazy, that's crazy. God damn. Oh, God damn, poor Nacho. Les vas a hablar. Oh God. Y les vas a decir que fue un trabajo difícil, pero que ya está hecho. Man. Can't kill this man, eh? Yeah, where is he? He knows. What an episode to catapult us into season six, eh? The heist of the century for Jimmy and Kim. Kim more fully putting on this guise of slipping Kim. Oh no. Oh, come on. Lalo, let off the leash, angry. Lost all of this. Family, this is personal. Nacho is focused, thunder rumbles, yes indeed. Damn, I'm almost, um, that final shot of Kim, wouldn't I? Is almost the thing that sticks with me the most. So stark, that line, compared with the Kim that I, I think I've seen and gotten to know over the course of this series. She is almost a different person. And I mean, that is Jimmy's pushing, prodding influence. And bless him, he's actually, he was self-reflecting, has been these last two episodes a little bit, and, and asking himself the question, am I bad for you? And I think, I mean, depends how you want to measure that, right? I mean, bad subjective to a certain extent, but I think by the rules and the morals that I think most of us govern ourselves by tell us that he is and she is. She got there, right? What they're thinking of doing is really dastardly. Let's put it that way. I mean, I'm excited to see it. It's almost painful that the subject of that is Howard, who I think is privileged though he is and, you know, problematic though that can be and whatever else. Like, I think as a human, he has tried to improve. At the same time, he's very privileged to the point that he can take the time to think about that stuff, to afford a, an amazing therapist, to, you know, I mean, you know, Sure, 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 sure. At the same time, it still takes the person making that decision and going through that. It still takes a lot. You know, it's scary talking about yourself and your feelings and being upset or whatever, whatever it might be. And pulling on that rawness, it's hard. It can be hard. So, you know, I don't want to take the accolade away from him completely. But it's sad that that one interaction that, again, I completely understand why Kim read it the way she did and, and responded to it the way she did. I think from everything that she's seen, it makes sense. And from everything that their relationship was, it makes sense that she read it that way. But obviously, yeah, it's kind of cruel irony that we as the audience know better. And we know that he was being genuine in the thing of he's bad for you. Watch yourself, you know. At the same time, there's maybe a theory of, there's a different way you could look at it, that being as outwardly and on the surface morally good as Kim is, maybe there is part of her that is just bad now, that doesn't see things the same way. She's so interesting because all of the pro bono stuff and her desire, it's so interesting having her desire for this clinic that gives the same kind of law experience as she was saying to those that are less financially fortunate that millionaires just have access to is objectively a, a really morally good 
thing. And I think, and I believe her, she's serious when she talks about that stuff. That is genuinely what she wants to do. But yeah, it's that danger, isn't it? I think she's moralized. I mean, she's emotionally and personally biased towards Howard. So that, that's, that's the thing that's making her not value the harm and hurt that she would enact on him in the way that she would someone else because she you know, has that personal tie to him. And it is, it's that danger of weighing the potential good that you might possibly be able to do by doing some uh, something unforgivable now. Is that worth the cost? Should that be allowed? Does it make it justified? I guess we'll uh, see as we enter season six and we will do that very soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you'd like to support me further, I do have some links down below to early access to all my videos. I've got YouTube memberships and Patreon. Pick whichever one you fancy if you do fancy it. If not, don't worry. Everything will be available on YouTube in time. Thank you to those who do support me genuinely, genuinely, genuinely. Just, just thank you for your support. But with that said, that is the end of this Better Call Saul Sunday. Thank you once more for watching. And we will be back very, very soon. Until then.